Hello, and welcome to Ocean Blooms, presented by the Whaling Museum and Education Center of Cold Spring Harbor. Join us as we learn about algae blooms and the threat this phenomenon poses to marine life. In this video, we'll also show you how to conduct an experiment to discover how humans contribute to ocean pollution. Then we'll learn how to decorate a bloom-inspired tie-dyed suncatcher that you can hang up at home. Are you ready to get started? Did you know an overgrown algae colony is called an algae bloom? What are algae? Algae are organisms or living things that are found in aquatic habitats all over the world. Like plants, algae produce food through photosynthesis and release oxygen into the air. In fact, more oxygen is released into the atmosphere by algae than by land plants. Way to go, algae. Algae come in many different shapes and sizes. Some algae are large and plant-like, like seaweed. Seaweed is a type of algae. In fact, it's the largest and most complex type of algae in the world. Some algae are so small, you need a microscope to see them. You might have seen algae like this on piers or docks or even rocks that sit in the water. It often looks like green scum or slime resting on the surface. Most algae like to grow in warm water that is rich in nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen. When there are too many nutrients in a body of water, algae reproduce very, very quickly. This is called an algae bloom. This may not sound like a problem since algae can be so helpful to the planet, producing all of that oxygen. But when algae blooms, it can completely take over an environment and make it difficult and even dangerous for other plants and animals that live in or near the body of water experiencing a bloom. Harmful algae blooms can produce toxins that can harm humans, fish, and other animals that drink or swim in that water. Some blooms are dense enough to keep sunlight from reaching lower depths of the water. This can be harmful to plants and animals living there. So what causes harmful blooms? And is there anything we can do to stop them? Sometimes algae blooms occur naturally, but human factors such as climate change and runoff pollution are making the problem worse. Remember, algae like to grow in water that is warm and full of nutrients. As the ocean warms due to climate change, it becomes easier for algae to grow and easier for blooms to happen. Water runoff can carry nutrients into lakes and oceans, encouraging algae growth as well. The easiest thing you can do to help prevent algae blooms is to help stop runoff pollution. What is runoff pollution? Well, people use a lot of substances in their homes and neighborhoods that can be really harmful. Think about it. We use chemicals to clean our kitchens and our bathrooms. We use detergents to clean our clothes and our carpets. We also use a lot of organic waste material. This is stuff like fertilizer that we use on our lawns to make grass grow. We also sometimes forget to pick up after our dogs when they go to the bathroom outside. <laughs> fertilizer and pet waste have a lot of nutrients in them. That's why we use fertilizer to make our gardens grow. But remember, algae love nutrients too. So it can be a problem if these nutrients make their way into our water systems. Runoff pollution occurs when water falls as rain on towns and cities and picks up these chemicals and other substances like organic waste that people have in and around their homes. Not good. This contaminated water then runs into sewers, streams, and rivers, and eventually it flows into lakes and oceans where it can cause algae blooms and a bunch of other problems. If you were living in water, you would not want to live in water that had a lot of chemicals or a lot of fertilizer in it. 
This is one of the issues with runoff pollution. One very easy way to see the effects of runoff pollution is to conduct a crumpled paper watershed experiment. This is something that you can do at home. So to do this experiment along with me, you're going to need some materials. You're going to need two pieces of white paper. You'll also need some washable markers. It's very important that you use washable markers and not permanent markers. Permanent markers will not work with this experiment. You'll also want to get a spray bottle that you fill with just water and paper towels or newspapers that you can put down on your workspace to keep it clean. So let's take a look at how to conduct this paper runoff experiment. This experiment is going to show us how water and other substances move through a landscape when it rains. So take one sheet of paper and crumple it up. This piece of paper is going to be your landscape. So open it up and smooth it out, but not too much. You want some hills and valleys in your land. Then take your blue washable marker and draw on your landscape. Imagine that these blue lines are rivers and streams. You can make ponds or lakes and oceans as well. This is all of the water in your landscape, and we're going to see how it behaves when new water is added in the form of precipitation. So this is where things get a little bit wet. You might wanna grab some newspaper or paper towels to protect your work surface. Place your piece of paper landscape on top and then grab your spray bottle and start to add rain to your landscape. Watch what happens when it rains. Do you notice how the blue marker starts to bleed and run downhill? It collects, forming little lakes and oceans of its own. This is exactly what happens in a real landscape when water is added in the form of precipitation. All of that rain collects into rivers and streams and runs downhill to gather in lakes and oceans. Now we're going to see what happens when humans are added to the mix. So take your second piece of paper and crumple it up just like before and then unfold it a little bit. I'm going to leave this piece of paper a little bit more crumpled up than the first. Once again, with this new landscape, you want to add blue marker to represent streams and rivers, any water that already exists in your landscape. With this one, I'm going to add a lake down here at the bottom. That's where I think everything's going to collect when the rain comes. This time though, I'm also going to add other colors. I'm going to add brown up here at the top where I imagine there's farmland and a lot of animal waste. There's probably a lot of cows up there doing a lot of pooping. I'm also going to add green where I think there are lawns and people are using fertilizers, all of those nutrients possibly entering our water system. I'm also going to add red marker where I think humans live. This is going to represent all of the chemicals that people use in their homes to clean and do other things. So we've got our landscape. Now let's see what happens when we add rain. You can see the colors start to bleed and flow downstream again, but the color this time is very different than that pure blue we got before. All of the other colors are mixing and that water down in my lake looks a lot muddier, a lot darker than it did when it was just pure blue water. That's all of those other things mixing with our water system. And this is exactly what happens when humans add other substances to the water that's around us. So you see, it's important to think about the chemicals that we use in our homes because you never know where they'll end up. So what can we do to help? Well, there are some easy steps that we can take at home to help reduce runoff pollution. We can use natural materials to clean our homes like vinegar and baking soda. You probably already have items like this at home. So instead of buying chemical cleaning products at the store, next time opt for these items instead. We can also use fewer fertilizers when we garden and make sure to pick up after our pets when they use the bathroom outside. 
Those simple steps will help make our ocean a happier, healthier place. Now that we know all about algae blooms and the pollution that they can cause, let's create a bloom-inspired sun catcher craft that we can hang up at home to help us remember to be mindful of the chemicals that we're using. To make this craft at home along with me, you're going to need a white coffee filter. If you don't have a coffee filter, that's okay. You can use a paper towel and you will get the same fun tie-dye effect. You're also going to want washable markers. Again, make sure that they're washable, not permanent. You'll need some water in a cup, a paintbrush, tape, scissors, glass or a plastic tray or plate, something to put your, uh, your coffee filter on when you do this craft. And finally, you'll need a piece of paper. So let's find out how to do this craft. So here I've gathered together the materials I need for this craft. The first step is going to be to color in my coffee filter. So just take your washable markers, remember to make them washable, and color all over the coffee filter. I'm going to add a lot of color strokes all over the place. Now your coloring does not have to be neat. All of these colors are going to bleed together just like we saw in the paper watershed experiment, but this time it's going to look kind of cool in tie-dye. So you can add as much or as little color as you want. It can be scribble scrabble like you see here. I'm using ocean colors because of ocean blooms, but you can use whatever color scheme makes you happy. All right, so once we've got all our color done like that, you want to take your coffee filter and put it onto a plate or a tray, something that, um, doesn't matter if it's going to get wet because we're going to add water to our coffee filter now. So I've got water here and a brush and all I'm going to do is brush this water onto my coffee filter. The more water I add you'll see the colors start to blend together in this beautiful sort of watercolor tie-dye effect. And this is why it's really important that we use washable markers and not permanent markers because if we used permanent markers these colors would just stay put. They wouldn't blend together beautifully like you see happening here. Now, once you've added as much water as you want to, just set that aside to dry. I'm going to teach you how to draw a, a little turtle to put in the center of your ocean bloom sun catcher. So we're gonna draw a sea turtle together. It's really easy. You start off with the shell, just make an oval shape like this. And then make another little oval at the top for the head. Much tinier this time. A little triangle for the tail. Kind of an upside down V shape with a swoop for the one arm. And the same thing on the other side. And then just two little knobs at the bottom for the legs. And then color it in. You can use construction paper if you want to, if you have that on hand, that would work great too. You just want something that's dark enough to block the sunlight because this is going to stand out um, in the middle of our beautiful sun catcher, which is why I'm coloring this white paper in black. Once you've got your sea turtle all colored in or all drawn, it's time to cut it out. So just take a pair of scissors and cut your sea turtle out of the paper. And there you go. Now you've got your sea turtle and your sun catcher and all you have to do now is wait for it to dry. Once your sun catcher is nice and dry, you can take it off the plate and we can tape the sea turtle onto the sun catcher. So I'm gonna flip my sea turtle over, take a piece of tape, any old tape will do, and I'm just gonna roll this tape up and place it on the back of my sea turtle like this and then put my turtle right in the middle of my sun catcher there. Now I'm gonna flip my sun catcher over and put a couple more rolls of tape on the back so that I can hang this up in a window to remind myself to be mindful of the things that I put into the water system. 
it's also something that I can look at and it'll make me happy throughout the day. So there we go, I've got my sun catcher and my tape and I'm gonna go put it up. Doesn't it look lovely? Well, I hope you enjoyed our program today and I hope you had fun learning a little bit more about algae blooms and what you can do to help protect our ocean. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you.